Welcome, YouTubers. I was uh, doing video slideshows, and somebody recommended that instead of video slideshows, that I should do audio shows. So I went out and bought a mid priced Sure Mag uh, microphone. And the reason the person said I should be doing audio instead of just slideshows with Bible verses is because of Romans 9.6. No, I'm sorry. Romans 10.17. Which reads, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, I don't remember who it was that suggested I do the audio instead of the video slideshows, but I guess in small part it's your fault. So, all right, let's do today's lesson, which is going to be, Is Jesus Christ God? Now, I'm going to uh, not so much paraphrase, but I may not read an entire verse, but you can look up the verses, because I'll give them to you, and I will read the important parts of them. In Matthew 1, chapter 1, verse 23, and it reads in part, They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, all these Bible verses are going to come from the King James Bible. And honestly, if you do a major study like I did about the Bible versions issue, I actually took a year and I had six or seven different versions of the Bible. And I used to lay them out on the floor read them in the King James, and then read them in the NIV, and the NASB, and the other 666 different perversions of the Bible. And it convinced me that the King James, the Geneva, and the Webster's Bible, yes, the dictionary guy, the Webster Bible, he did a King James Bible that was updated to the modern language of his day, which was, I think, uh, 1828 is when he did his dictionary. So, from 1611 to 1828, he updated and modernized the words. The King James, for example, when Joseph had his dream, it said that um, there were some kine, K-I-N-E, well, kine is Old English, and it means cattle or cows. And the Webster Bible will update that accordingly from kine to cows or cattle. doesn't change the meaning. It's just we don't use Old English like we used to. But I think you should uh, definitely use the King James and... Um, that's my opinion. Now, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, that says God never changes. What about Jesus? Does he change? Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So who is our Savior? In Isaiah 43, 11, it reads in part, I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. In Jude 1, 
12, to the only wise God, our Savior. In Titus 2.10, God, our Savior. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 10, we trust in the living God, who is the Savior. In Luke 1, verse 47, God is my Savior. Now, let's read how Jesus is the only Savior. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 14, The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. In 2 Peter 3.18, Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In John 4, 42, the Christ, the Savior of the world. In Titus 1, 4, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Luke 2, verse 11, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And here is one of my favorite verses. I believe it was Peter that said this speaking in boldness to the Pharisees, the Jews in Jerusalem, when he was called. Acts, <clears throat> excuse me, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus in 2 Timothy 2.10, salvation is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. In Hebrews 2.10, captain of their salvation, perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 5.9, the author of eternal salvation. Now, who created all the universe and earth? God did. In Genesis 1.1 we read, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth, the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. But in the New Testament, it says that Jesus, who is Christ, created the heaven and the earth. In Hebrews 1, verse 10, Unto the Son he saith, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Colossians 1, verse 16. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. All things were created by him and for him. In John 1, 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, God is the Word. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in John 1, verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, Now, God is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. In Isaiah 41.4, I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am He. And Jesus said, Fear not. I am the first 
and the last in Revelation 1, 17. In Psalms, chapter 103, verse 2 and 3, The Lord forgiveth all thine iniquities. And there was a question in Mark, chapter 2, verse 7. And I read, Who can forgive sins but God alone? But in Mark 2, 5, Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. In Isaiah 63, and verse 16, we read, Thou, O Lord, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. And yet we read in Titus chapter 2, 13 and 14, that it's Jesus who redeems us. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Now, let's read how God is one God. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, and the Jews, especially being monotheists, which means one God, believers of one God, they know this verse very well. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. But we read in John 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. In John 1, 1, Verse 3, verse 10 and 14. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In John 14 and verse 9, Jesus said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou, then, show us the Father? And this is probably one of the most hated verses in the Bible of those that are what is known as anti-Trinitarians. Some Pentecostals, um, should be called, they'll, they'll call themselves Jesus Oneness Pentecostals, Jehovah's Witnesses, and a few others, Christadelphians. 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and, this, and these three are one. Now, there'll, so a lot of people will tell you, oh, this isn't in the older, more accurate, more reliable Bible manuscripts. Well, let me tell you something. The Vatican's manuscripts, do you know that the book of Revelation, the entire book of Revelation is not in the Vatican manuscripts? And yet they want to tell you that these are the older, more reliable manuscripts? So, does that mean we should remove the entire book of Revelation out of the Bible? And just remember something. The Greek church is the one that gave us the Bible, not the Catholic church. When you had English people like John... Wycliffe, who translated the Bible from Greek into English, 
When the Catholic Church got a hold of him, they burned him. What was his sin? Because he dared put the Bible, the Greek Bible, into the hands of the common English people. That was his sin that he died for. And what kills me is the average churchgoer, I won't call them Christians, I'll call them churchgoers, won't even bother to pick up the Bible and read it. I mean, after all, there's too much good shows on reality TV and what have you, so. Well, in the Old Testament, in Psalms 2, 7, did you know that God has a son? The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. In John 5.18, Jesus is God's son. Jesus said also that God was his father. So in Psalms, God is the Holy One. In Psalms 71.22, I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth. O my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. And in Psalm 78.41, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. In Psalms 89.18, For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. And in Psalm 16.10, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Suffer means allow, by the way. Neither wilt thou allow Neither wilt thou allow thine Holy One to see corruption, but suffers fine. And in Isaiah 10.20, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. But yet Jesus is the Holy One. In Acts 2, 27, we read in part, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. And in 3, 13 and 14, Acts, The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his Son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. I believe this was when Peter was talking to the Pharisees. And Acts 13, 34 and 15. And as concerning that, he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David, wherefore... He saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. In Matthew 4.10, Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus speaking to Satan, that fallen angel.
In Hebrews 1, 6, we find that Jesus is worshipped. And again, when God bringeth in the first begotten, Jesus, into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. And in John 20, 28, Thomas answered and said unto Jesus, My Lord and my God. In Isaiah 9, 6, we read, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And in John 4, 25 and 26, The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. God is everlasting. In Psalms 93, 1 and 2, we read, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. But here we read it. Jesus is everlasting. In Micah 5.2 we read, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. In Isaiah 4.28, we read that God is glorified. I am the Lord. That is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. But yet God glorified Jesus. In John 17.5, we read, And now, O Father, Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. In John 5.23 we read, All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which had sent him. And in Hebrews 1, and eight, but unto the Son he saith, and that's God saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever, a scepter of righteousness in the scepter of thy kingdom. When Moses was on the mountain, Moses was on the mountain and he asked God a question. And the question was, when the people ask me what your name is, what shall I tell them? And in Exodus 3, chapter 3, verse 14, we read God's answer. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me 
unto you. In John 8, verse 58, Jesus speaking to the Jews said, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. In Psalms 103, 2, Bless the Lord, who healeth all thy diseases. But in the New Testament, it was Jesus that healed all manners of disease. In Matthew 8, 16, Jesus healed all that were sick. In Matthew 4, 23, we read, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manners of disease among the people. In Matthew 4.24, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had the palsy, and he healed them. In Matthew 8.16, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. Matthew 9.35 And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 12.15 But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 12.22 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both saw and spake. Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Matthew 15, 30. And the great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Matthew 19, 2. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Mark 3:10. For he healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many had, as many as had plagues. Luke 4.40 Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid hands on every one of them and healed them. Luke 5.15 but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Luke 6.17 And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon and came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Luke 16, 18 And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Luke 6, 19 And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and healed them all. Now, let's read where God is the judge of the world. Psalms 94, 1 and 2. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, 
O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself, lift up, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. And in Genesis 18.25, Abraham said to the Lord, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Now, in John 5.22, Jesus said, The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. In John 5.26, we read, The Father hath life in himself. So God has life in himself. But here, in John 1.4, so hath God given to the Son to have life in himself. In Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. John 1, 4. God raises up the dead. The Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them. John 5, 21. But in that same verse we read, The Son quickeneth whom he will. And here's one of my favorite verses. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hebrews 1, 8-10 But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, o God, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. In Philippians 2, 5 through 8, Christ Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but made of himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 1 John 5, 7 For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Acts 20:28. 20, Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 1 John 3:16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Acts 7, 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, And Stephen called, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We read that in Isaiah 9-6. Isaiah is a really wild book. If you've never read it, you really should. Some people call it the miniature Bible. John 20:28, 20, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, John 14, 8 and 9. Philip said unto him, unto Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, 
and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Second Corinthians 4, 4 Christ, who is the image of God. Second Corinthians 4, 6 Glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person. Colossians 1, 13 Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 14 In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the force born from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9 The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Isaiah 43 And yet those are the words that John the Baptist himself said when he was heralding the arrival of Jesus, who is Christ. And by the way, Christ is not his name. It's not his last name. It's an office. Christ is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word Messiah. It means anointed one, Savior. Well, I hope you learned something. If you believe the King James Bible, and if you believe Jesus is the Christ, I tell you what, it's impossible to not read all these verses, New and Old Testament, and for somebody to actually deny that Jesus, well, you could say he's the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, but I say he's God the Son. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to have some more of these studies come out later. I know I'm not the greatest speaker in the world, but I'm not a hireling. I don't beg you for ties. My reward is serving and feeding the sheep. And I hope you'll take the time to read your Bible. Turn off your TV and read the Bible. You'll learn something. And let me leave you with one more thing. In Luke 11, 28. But he said, and that's Jesus talking here. Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God. And keep it. Well, thank you for listening. And may this truly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.